Welcome, welcome back everybody to the RS cast. It's your boy Hops back at it on the mic, and I'm gas to be back here. I'm joined by Mr. Bomb Manitan and Boopy after the second week to recap what we've been seeing over the previous week and how that has, you know, caused everything to line up in the conference standings. We've got big man Archeon, man the helm of the stream. So a big thanks to him. But guys, welcome back, Boopy. Barman, it's been a great week of Rocket League. I've seen uh, a couple of you guys on the cask. It's been really good fun indeed. Uh, but just a, a few pointers out uh, uh, over the past week. What has been the big things happening? Barman, I'm going to toss it over to you first. Well, we, we've once again seen some wonderful Rocket League action again. There are a fair few conferences that have tightened it up even further, but... In a couple of them this time around, there's really a, a team or two that are running away with it, or a team that is maybe slightly lagging behind a certain team in Elite, certainly proving to that, but yeah, lots going on, and can't wait to get into it. Me too, I'm very excited, and Boopy, how about yourself? Uh, some great results across the board for some, but some, as, as Barman said, struggling a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a big mix. Some teams really, really popping off, doing well, um, and getting a good lead in the standings, and some kind of draining behind, but... um. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll break it down uh, today. But something I'm definitely looking forward to is uh, Premier next week. 100% Premier is starting this week. Uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and with that, let's go into the weekly review, starting off with the prospect here and see how the results over the past week has kind of separated or brought the teams even closer. And yes, Boop, your mic is still crackalacking all over the place. Hope you get that sorted. But Glacies, just to look over it, uh, only three four rows coming out from there here on the flip side. And Ignis, only two four rows happening there, but a plethora of three ones in Ignis and a plethora of two twos in Glacies. So all of both of these, t you know, both of these uh, conferences lining up nicely. Uh, but I'm good to see Zeno catching up and getting some three one wins, getting some leads under their belt. Uh, uh, Boopy, what do you see here in this Glacies, uh, the Glacies schools that can really shift things? up yeah i mean i we have to speak about alter fouring icicle on stream i mean that was an amazing stream game and um yeah alter really really stepped up in that series they look very dominant um and yeah i mean they swept the predicted first uh team uh, predicted first in power ranking so they really made a statement on stream that they're one of the top teams but following that match they did um 2-2 two -two tartarus uh, which was a bit of an Ill interesting result because Tartarus is the bottom team of Glacies at the moment. What do you mean so, bottom team? Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> We're not I the mean, bottom team. <laughs> you're, you're bottom on the standings, are you not? I, are we? I didn't even look. Yeah, <laughs> you're 10th. <temp. laughs> Ouch. Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't Ouch. matter. I mean, sorry, <laughs> sorry, to, sorry to break the bad news, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Tartarus uh, 10th on in the... Uh, in the standing so i mean definitely red flags showing for alter i mean sometimes they pop off but you know sometimes they're not the best but we'll, yeah. we'll have to see how they uh their form is continuing indeed i mean it's great showing coming out from the alter side to step it up but once again as you said uh, the consistency may be tossed into question the other four rows laid in prelude for rowing microfaction and majors getting four over over tartarus which i casted it was a fantastic game to cast majors looking incredibly strong when their synergy all lines up but on the flip side only two four rows happening in ignis uh, excellent getting a four row over plutong Cardinals for owing oxygen. Barman, what do you see over in this Ignis conference? Uh, the, the first one that I was drawn to was Iztok, who is a team that not many predicted to do too well, but they are sitting pretty calmly in mid-table at the moment. They got a 3-1 win over Luna Oberon. Uh, Oberon being a team that you know has an experienced GM in Louis and has players that have been here for quite a while. Buckets, Mr. C, coming back from their break. But Iztok, they brought in cold fire this week, and They've gotten two three ones and against that Oberon team, very good showing and just put them above that team in the standings. 
Good performance from them indeed. A couple of notable ones off the back of me. I think there was a, the two twos for Caro and Pluton. It's interesting. It's good to have, you know, they're getting those wins for Pluton, particularly. They're getting zero forward by Exxon earlier on the week, and getting those two wins can be dividend to Caro, though, with a five and one week, uh, five and three week even. It's a good job from them. Oxygen able to take one game, but still only faltering two Cardinals. I mean, any comments on that, boys? Oh, baby girl. <laughs> yeah, comments on uh, Cardinals. Well, well, uh, Cardinals yeah, is uh, Cardinals and Oxygen because they only get they only they went to uh, one and seven this week. Oxygen did. Yeah, I mean, Oxygen has had kind of a difficult week going against um, Caro, which is you know the third place team, and then Cardinals, who is probably uh, the best team in Ignis. So a very difficult week for them. Very difficult opponents. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's kind of to be expected. Oxygen at the moment sitting at ninth um, could potentially move higher. But, I mean, they've just had a lot of difficult games and, and it's uh, it's key, key, keeping them a little bit grounded uh, down the bottom at the moment. But, uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll have to see indeed. And with that, let's go over to the fixtures of the upcoming week. Guys, I need your energy a little bit. I could toss over a question <laughs> to Boopy and Barman. They're just sat here silent. Uh, Barman, is your cat playing the piano again? Is that why? I don't know. But anyway, no, with the glaze. With the Glacy standings, you see Micah Faction Tata is dropping to ninth and 10th positions. Ice Cool and Limousin also dropping to 5th and 6th. But good moves happening for Zeno and Preludes up to 7th and 8th. Alter, Mages and Hot Metal all moving up their respective positions. But at the tippity top now is still terror. But only at the top due to that goal difference. As we have got a three-way tie for that number one spot. Mages, Alter and Terra. All with uh, six, uh, all with eleven wins to five losses. Uh, but as I did have to mention, Terra up there with that seven plus seventeen goal difference. However, Alter is very, very closer uh, with a plus sixteen goal difference. Major just a little bit further behind. I think an important note is that Hot Metal is set in fourth but with a negative ten goal difference. So doing a good job of closing out those closer games, and that may well be the difference. And Barman, any uh, anything else to add here? Uh, uh, quite a bit of a shift to considering it's only two second week. Yeah, and, you know, the one team not shifting in Terra, only there at the top because of their 8-0 week one, as they go with three and five here, you know, it shows that these these teams at the top can afford to drop series. You know, we're seeing Alter drawing against my team Tartarus and even still at the top. So you don't always need to be at the top of the top of your game. You just need to show enough consistency that you can get yourself up to the top. And at the moment, these three teams are looking like they have it. And it might turn out to be quite the three-way battle. We saw it in uh, in minor last season where three teams were battling it out for two spots. Might be the same case here where Terra, Alter and Mages are both are all three battling for those three upper bracket spots. Indeed, indeed. And Bar and Boopy, we're seeing uh, Icicle, Limousin, Zeno and Prelude all on seven wins and nine losses, battling it out for those uh, eighth through to fifth positions. Uh, expecting a battle there as well? Absolutely. I mean, it's all so close. I mean, all the way from from fourth down to tenth, there's only a couple of of wins in between. So, I mean, anything can happen uh, next week. And it's so close at the top as well. I mean, only really down to goal difference. This table could look completely different next week. It really could. But that is the standings in the Glacies for the prospect here. Moving our attention over to the standings for Ignis, uh, as we know, as we can see, this tier incredibly close, but it's what you come to expect. All these players performing at their top end, uh, but a couple of shifts. All the teams shifting around this week. Luna, Oxen, and Underworld stuck at the bottom here. Underworld still struggling with a four and twelve record and a minus seventeen goal differ. We see Pluton also moving down into the fifth spot. Uh, after this week, Istok and Fearless Echo moving up after Istok acquiring a new acquisition to move them up. And they seem to be performing very well. And a huge shift happening at the top uh, with fourth, third, second and first. Overturn, Kara, Exelon and Cardinals uh, respectively. All moving up and shifting up. Cardinals claiming that top spot with 13 wins and three losses. But trailing closely is Exelon. We're going 12 and 4. I mean, Cardinals, they have a plus 32 goal difference there. That's 10 more than Exelon in that second place. So if Cardinals keep on performing like they are, it's definitely going to be a hard mileage, isn't it, Boopy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Cardinals are really getting the results they want and need to kind of run away with it at the top of the standings. But, I mean, again, 
this table is so close. A little bit less close than uh, than the Glacier side, but it is still very close. I mean, mm. um, yeah, between fourth and tenth, only really five games. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it is very very tight indeed. And once again. Week number three could shake things up. And Barman, who are you expecting to kind of make these climbs? I think you have to look at these two teams coming up to sixth and seventh over taking the three teams. You know, we talked about his talk before, going six and two, much better than their first week. But Fearless Echo not doing too badly either. They at least grab a game against Cardinals and then they go on to be Underworld, who are seeming like they're going to be one of their competitors down at the bottom. So great moves from them, going four and four. Sometimes that's all you need to get yourself out of out of the foot of the table. You know, just a one week where you level it out and that'll allow you to kick it on. And, you know, the negative 15 goal difference isn't the most convincing, but sometimes you don't need that as well. Sometimes you just need the game wins and you can, uh, you can allow a few goals in and your losses. And as long as you get those one goal games, then you can really find yourself pushing up with, alongside those teams like Iztok. 100%. I have to like, pitch one last question before, you know, we move on to the fixtures, and that is Oxygen Underworld. They've obviously had a hard first two weeks matching those top teams. Do you think, uh, as things stabilise, do you think there's going to be a potential run for them, Boopy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they'll get their chance to work their way up, absolutely. They just have to, you know, every single game counts in this kind of league, so they just have to really take make the most of those kind of mid-table games that they get and, and not worry too much about the the high and, and top table games they have indeed let's move on to the upcoming fixtures of this week and see how there are potential shifts up and changes within these standings uh, obviously we talked about how close these tiers are especially within glaciers uh, i'm expecting a bit of a change up here and some key games i think i'm looking at tartarus and seeing how they can perform obviously at the bottom of the table uh much to barman's dismay but i think uh you know definite to potential shifts happening if they can keep that up as well as ultra who will be facing Terra and Prelude this week. Uh, Going to be interesting to see how they all pan out. On the flip side, Ignis, Iztok and Fearless Echo. The two teams we are expecting to kind of make a bit of a run here in, in shot with, uh, you know, moving up. Uh, it will definitely separate those two teams. And I think another key game does also fall on Iztok, but this time facing Exelon. I think that is a real shift up. If Iztok keep up their fantastic form, taking down the potential second place uh, team in the current rankings could well shift and change things up barman have i missed anything uh, i think maybe pluton versus cardinals one to look at after pluton drop from that 4-0 sweep to exelon you're going to look for the bounce back and going up against another top team cardinals even at the very top of the table it's going to be a huge test for them whether they can get their season back on track and other other one underworld oxygen i'm not sure if that's been mentioned, but, you know, another game, this time at the bottom end of the table, where it's two teams that are trying to bounce back and trying to make sure that you don't let it run away from you. We, we keep talking about the fact that, you know, it's early in the season and you can't push on, but you, you cannot keep relying on that. And that's a huge game for, for both of them. Both be talking about the fact that Underworld have to be winning those games against uh, teams that are close to them. But if, this is a huge opportunity for them. And if it's going to be a huge impact whoever comes out the victor of that one if it's a draw then it might be even worse for the both of them indeed it may be yeah uh, so those are your fixtures for the week three ahead of us the week that we are currently in but guys take note those are some key games here and how close the tiers are as we move on to the next tier and these are the results coming out from the challenger section here. Uh, some good results across the board. Not many two twos on the board here, but a plethora of four O's, particularly within Ignis, really separating out the two teams, uh, the, the teams within the rankings. Uh, and once again, I think Phyllis Delta looking very, very strong, getting a full row against Luton Atlas. But as I'm saying that, also dropping 3-1 to Zion. Zahn also getting a 2-2 over the Crusaders side. On the flip side, in Glacies, uh, we see Glacier going 4-0 over the Apprentices. Uh, but then, once again, getting another 4-0 over Xyron. So, an 8-0 week for Glacier. And that is something we did mention before the stream. Barman, I'm going to actually throw it over to you. 8-0 for Glacier. Looking very, very comfortable. Yeah, maybe um, doing slightly better than Booby's prospect team as... They fell to alter Whoa. on stream, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's a big step up, big step up, and you, you need it in this sort of 
in this sort of conference where you know you're, you're 14 and two it's such a such a rare feat for teams in these opening two weeks but still you have shrine one behind you pyromancers two behind you and every game counts that you know so much momentum pushing forward and against the teams that they were they were doing it apprentices zero on the teams that were maybe going to be in and around them if they weren't falling to those 4-0 sweeps and really means that they've separated themselves from at least those two who are now rooted into the mid-table. Yeah. Well, at the tip of the top, this Glacier side, uh, Boopy looking over Ignis. Uh, some, quite a few full rows here. Um, some teams really stepping it up where need be. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, quite a lot of full rows. Phyllis Delta versus uh, Luna Atlas, uh, Overall versus Arcus. And um, yeah, I mean, the team I really wanted to mention uh, from Ignis was Zeon. They've had a really good week. Uh, Crusaders is known to be quite a strong uh, challenger team. And um, Zeon obviously being the previous champions from last season, coming into this season, there was a lot of hype built around them. And um, yeah, I mean, they haven't had kind of the best results in week one, but definitely bounced back in uh, week number two, taking down Fearless Delta uh, 3-1 and also 2-2 in Crusaders, who's known to be a strong team. So um, Zeon definitely have, have had a really good week this week. Mm -hmm, indeed and Glacier isn't the only team to go 8 know this week overall has done it as well throwing Helium and then throwing Arcus uh, definitely pipping their top spot into their own hands and with that let's have a look at the Glacier standings obviously Glacier going 8 and oh you know they're in the Glacier's franchise conference their name is Glacier feeling feeling very comfortable over in that conference so good ados from them but as you said it is 14 and 2 for them at the top but uh, shrine very very hot on their heels 13 and 3 and shrine as well having a better goal difference with a plus 29 that's 13 more than glacier definitely interesting but glacier claiming that top spot to pyromancers parthene and neptunium also moving up to third fourth and fifth uh, uh, oh, rather than, you know, pipping distance and shooting distance within of Galatia and Shrine at the top spot. Uh, only uh, only six games actually separating those. Uh, Zyron, Apprentices and Chorus also get knocked down to 6th, 7th and 8th. They're all tied at 6 and 10. However, Orcus and Nizuka Gang struggling at the bottom. Particularly Nizuka Gang, who are going 3 and 13 with a negative 30 goal diff. And, um, you know, Barman... That's not a great way. Second week only, and they're already struggling at this moment. Maybe you have to be thinking there's got to be some changes. Yeah, might might have to go that way. And, you know, technically this is a build for them. They go at 2-6 and six as opposed to their 1-7 and seven last time. But still, both games are losses to uh, Pyromancers and Shrine, respectively. So maybe there's an argument that it's strength of schedule and they're going up against two really top teams. But... At the same time, it's early in the season, so they're not always the completely defined top teams. And if you grab games against those, then they're going to be dropping in the table as well as you rising. So it's it's bad news for them. And Orcus, we saw them on stream hops. They caught that first game against Parthenay and, and just couldn't keep up that same level as they fell 3-1. And in the other one, they got a draw. It's their first, it was their first uh, non-loss of the season. But draws aren't all you need, especially if you're losing other series in the week. And means that they, there's a danger of the bottom two here causing a rift to the rest of the table. Indeed, indeed. And, and Boopy, these Glacier and Shrine, so, so strong at the top, effectively, only dropping five games between them. That's uh, Pyromancers. They also, they've dropped five games in itself in that third spot. A really impressive showing so far. Do you think uh, it's going to be these two at the tippity top by the end of the season, or are we going to see some changes? I'm, I'm hopeful if... Uh, both rosters stay how they are. I think. I think. Yeah. I think this is uh, going to be the top two, hopefully, uh, in my case. But I mean, looking at Shrine, they are looking scary with that plus twenty nine goal difference, and they're only one game behind. So, you know, it, it definitely could flip the other way. Uh, but it has to be said that this is uh, ignoring kind of the three way tie between sixth and eighth. This is kind of the kind of widest spread table we've seen so far. It definitely is, and uh, with that being said, uh, Glacier Shrine, tippity top here. Gorkus Nizuka Gang struggling at the bottom, but we're moving over to the Eagleness standings and seeing how these two, how these teams pan out against each other for the challenger tier. And once again, I'm expecting a little bit more separation. We do see Phyllis Delta almost comfortably at the top with 13 and three. The plus 14 goal diff. However, once again, overall, only that game behind with a 12 and 4 after a very, very impressive, impressive week uh, going 8 and 
Oh, uh, we do see Masai and Zion also moving up the table to third and fourth with a 10, 6, and 8, and 8, respectively. But Crusaders are tying Zion with that 88 record in fifth. Uh, we see Cerberus now in the sixth spot, dropping down there with a 7 and 9, but tied with Scorn with 7 and 9 as well. So quite a few ties between that mid table. Arcus and Helium have stayed in the same spot with a 6 and 10 and 5 and 11 record. Uh, and on the flip side, down at the bottom there is Luna Atlas uh, with a 4 and 12 record with a minus 9 gold diff. And something that's really standing out to me is that Helium, they are, you know, plus 0. So they are neutral ground with the gold diff, but are still just struggling to find them wins. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, <laughs> sorry, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say your name. It's like it's like, it. It, it's like it's like like I'm saying, you know, uh, ticking your names off in, in in a register at the morning of like a class. Uh, Boopy, <laughs> you here? Barman, you here? Right, Barman, go for it. Uh, you know, helium plus zero, still in ninth. Yeah, it just shows how how tough uh, a league like this is. You know, you you seemingly scoring enough goals and, and getting enough defensive plays in, but. Doesn't really matter if you're still dropping the games. They were one of the teams that overall took it to in, in one of their sweeps. And the other one up against score. And they, they did grab a win. But their first win of the season, not enough to do much for them as they stick in ninth. And Luna Atlas as well, another team that's been facing a lot of losses. Three on the bounce now for them. The, the first time, only one of three teams in Challenger to do so. And the only one in Ignis here to go up to that three series loss mark. And ever since that first draw, it's just been going downhill. And they don't even have the, the consolation of having a, goal a good goal difference at minus nine. It's a bit painful indeed. And and Boopy, this time you can talk, but I want you to just <laughs> mention Fearless Delta overall again. He's a very, very close one and two spot at the top here. Yeah, I mean... You have to give your hats off to Phyllis Delta because, I mean, mentioning that result earlier, um, dropping that game to Zeon uh, and losing 3-1, uh, uh, they're still um, at the top with a one-game lead. So they clearly are kind of a force to be reckoned with and uh, uh, definitely one of the top teams, if not the top team in uh, in Ignis. So, um, yeah, good for them. But, um, yeah. I, I mean... One team I did want to mention was Cerebrus. I mean, there was a lot of hype uh, built around them. They were predicted uh, winning the tier as well. Um, and they just haven't really shown up in league play so far. I mean, I, I kind of expect more from them in the following weeks. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes for them. Definitely looking for Cerebrus to step up uh, and over with that eight and zero record this week, chasing Phyllis Delta's tail. Tail Luna Atlas though struggling at the bottom. Let's see if they can find their momentum heading into week three and the fixtures. As we're about to have a glance over where the most important games may lie. I am going to be saying Barman and Boopy's names when I call them into the chat next time because they seem to be half asleep. But we move forward. <laughs> um, a bit like Boopy's gameplay. <laughs> whoa, anyway, whoa, we move whoa. on. We move on. We move on. Uh, Galatia's here. You see Galatia, obviously that team to beat at the moment, uh, who are going to be facing Neptunium and Pyromancers. I think Glacier versus Pyromancers is definitely a good game. Pyromancers having a fantastic performance over the Orcas side early on the week, which I got the pleasure of casting. I think that is definitely a match to watch out for. Shrine, though, on the other hand, who are chasing their tails, uh, is going to be facing Xyron in their second matchup. Uh, and uh, their first match will be against Apprentices, uh, who are also looking very strong. So uh, quite a few, quite a few close games potentially here. Uh, also on the flip side of thing, Nozuka Gang versus Parthenay and Nozuka Gang versus Orcus, uh, two games that really could step it up for Nozuka Gang, who are struggling at this mo at this moment in time. Ignis on the other side, uh, a plenty of good games. Fearless Delta versus Crusaders could be one that you might want to tune in for. Zion versus Overall, I think, is probably the biggest game of the week in Darts 2 Challenger. It is Zion who are making a bit of a run. They're looking strong. Overall, who just come the, off the back of an 8 and 0 week. Uh, definitely a game to watch out for and plenty of fine, fine matchups for all you, Barman. Yeah, again, like in Glacies, there's a bottom of the table clash in Ignis with Helium and Atlas going at it uh, tomorrow on Tuesday. So more chances for these teams struggling to, to break out of the, the bottom two to, to rise up and try and get their season back on track. I think 
Arcus score and maybe an interesting one as well. Two teams that had a loss and a win last week and, you know, showing that these teams still in mid-table that are lower down are still grabbing wins here and there. They're still trying to challenge these teams in and around them, but it's it's those games against the teams that are in a similar, posi- similar position to you that allow you to push up as well, you know, similar to the Helium Atlas. It's it's those games that are that are in the same areas that you know that are seemingly the more interesting matchups because it, it shows how close it's going to be and you know it's only only a single game separating them in two goals shows how good that one could be it really really could be a great matchup and bp what about yourself any key games apart from the glacier matchups uh, that you're really really looking out for yeah i mean i'm definitely looking uh forward to the one that you mentioned fearless delta versus crusaders that's going to be a really really good match to watch um, as well as that, I'm looking forward to Helium's games and Cerebrus's games. I've butchered that name uh, so much, I do apologize. But um, yeah, I, th- I think both uh, Cerebrus and Helium are, are, are two teams that are strong, but it, their kind of league play journey is not going too well so far. So um, I'm definitely excited to kind of watch those games and see if they can kind of perform a little bit better than they have so far. So. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And a big thank you for Slipstream for the raid of 16. Welcome, guys. Uh, hope you're doing well. If you're interested in competing in the RSC or any of our Tuesday weekly tournaments, uh, do you drop a follow. And I'm sure we'll be having links in the chat posted there. Weekly tournaments put on by Versus here at the RSC every Tuesday. If you're interested in competing in the league, do drop us a follow and join our Discord. Uh, where you can find it in the chat as links going as a hype train is starting as well. You know what happens when a hype train gets going? My voice gets lost. As we are now going to quickly jump over to the next tier as this hype train starts to emerge its ugly head. As you're going to look at the results of the previous week. Uh, interesting results indeed. I've got a good pleasure of casting quite a few of these games over the week. And I think some really stand-up performances coming out from Sorcerers over Journeyman. Getting that 4-0 sweep. Uh, uh, however, then faltering over to Blizzard, uh, who losing 1-2-3. Blizzard also got a 3-1 over a Reboss, so a good week coming out from them. On the flip side, we've got a uh, some great performance from Fearless Charlie. We went 4-0 versus Neri, uh, and then a 2-2 versus Toxin, so a 6-2 week for them. Some struggling shy sides, though. On the flip side, Neri going 1-7 and seven this week. Really something that you don't want to be seeing in your week number two. Overkill also struggling on the flip side, also going 1-7. and seven. Uh, Boopy, really, uh, some uh, from topsy-turvy results. There seems to be a real separation between the top teams and the bottom teams. Yeah, there, there definitely is. I mean, there's a few teams, you know, not doing too well in these kind of tiers, and there's a few teams that are really, really kind of shining. I mean, take Sentinels, for example. Um, they've really been on top form these first two weeks. They've gone 7-1 both weeks. Um, and they're, they're kind of really starting to run away with it in the Ignis standings. Not only that, um, Frizz obviously winning Clip of the Week last week. So, I mean, they're, they're really having a good performance um, um, so far in this season. Indeed, that is very true. And Boopy... What else stands out to you? Obviously, Frizz and his team's performance have been absolutely stellar. But any other teams who may be looking to climb a bit further? Yeah, I definitely think um, Toxin uh, will be um, moving up the standings. Um, I mean, managing to get a draw against Fearless Charlie. Fearless Charlie was the team that won um, the Rivals preseason, and, and they looked really, really solid. Um, and and Toxin got a draw against them um, with, I think subbing out their their star player so uh definitely potential from toxin uh to to move up that they're, they're a strong team indeed it is and barman what about yourself looking at glaces primarily uh, i think you know we were talking about it on that journeyman sorcerers cast that journeyman had won earlier in the week and it's quite an impressive win in a series where all the the games were one by one goal and the last game was a seven minute ot that journeyman did take it shows that you know, maybe they didn't in the series against Sorcerers, but they definitely have some element of clutch factor in order to take that one and pr- provide further doom to this Uranium side that are kind of struggling at the moment. And, you know, we, we, there were a lot of players we talked about for Journeyman to perform in, in the other one, but maybe maybe they did so there and they just had the wrong matchup on stream. <laughs> Maybe, maybe indeed. Uh, but guys, that is your uh, with your, blah, 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 your results for week number two for the rival tier. With that, let's have a look at the standings. I'm butchering my words as I talk here. 
So I'm gradually building up the hype for the hype chain, which is at level three, guys. Uh, just so you know, all the funds, uh, including subscriptions and bits dropped here, go back into the RSC to make it even better, bigger, and greater. So, guys, uh, if you've got a subscription, if you've got a, a prime sub, drop it here. It only benefits you if you are a player, as if you are a spectator, if you're just a member of the Discord. It all benefits everybody. So if you've got a Prime subscription, drop it here. If you've got some bits left over, drop them here. If you've got a bit of cash left over, drop it here. It is very, very welcome. As we now look at our attention over to the Glacier standings, but it's still at the top with a 12 and 4 record. On Belliard chasing the tails of 11 and 5 here. And two teams tied in at that third place spot. Sorcerers and Sanctum both with a 10 and 6. Uh, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how they chase. As there's only three game, only two wins separating first and fourth right now. Really, really close. And Rebos also chasing the tails. He have dropped down to the fifth spot. Concerto and Zyphos have moved up to sixth and seventh. Uh, and tying Zyphoth in 7th place is Journeyman, who both of those teams going 7 and 9. Uranium have dropped, unfortunately, 2, 4 and 12 into ninth spot. And Arena Tribe still stuck at the bottom with only 2 wins uh, over the 16 games they played over the past 2 weeks. They've got a negative 27 gold diff as well. Not very looking very good at them, but this tier is so incredibly close, Barman. Yeah, and even the, there's Pyrolus to be drawn at the top and bottom, Blizzard having all four games go to a 3-1 victory, Uranium having all four games go to a 1-3 defeat, so, you know, if they can start flipping some of those around, it gets even closer as, you know, Uranium and Arena Tribe have sort of dropped off the bottom, but talking talking about these close wins, Montbelliard and Sanctum drew last week, showing that, you know, even that, that one win from Montbelliard gets him above Sanctum and, and challenging Blizzard more convincingly, and just everything of how this conference is close at the moment. It always seems to be the case with, with Rival more than anywhere else. And, you know, maybe there's two teams that are a bit off the mark, but for the rest of them, only five wins separating top from eighth. It, it shows you how, the, once we keep saying it, but it's it's anyone's, it's anyone's season to take. And two weeks in, there's there's so much potential in every single one of these teams as you, as you go down the table. Yeah, it's really, really close. And Boopy, I think you can concur with this. It is so, so close indeed, this tier. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, you know, as one man was saying, Uranum and um, Arena Tribe, they really need to kind of get some some good results and make every single match, every single game count to try and move up uh, these standings. But apart from those two at the bottom, it is so close. And you even have teams like um, Concerto with the plus seven goal difference uh, potentially kind of have the ability to move higher, potentially into fourth or something. So, I, I mean, I expect this table to move around a lot but, uh, by the time uh, week three comes around. 100% indeed. Uh, and these are your standings for Glaces. With that, let's turn our attention over to Ignis and the standings there. Expecting a little bit more of a separation happening here as we are seeing Sentinels claiming that top spot, only dropping two games so far, going 14 and 2 at the Tibbly top. Toxin subsequently have dropped into second after Sentinels' brilliant performances. They are now 12 and 4, Toxin. Chasing the tails are very close, a third, fourth, and fifth, with Yoruba 11 and 5, and Unity and Phyllis Charlie both at 10 and 6. So very, very close between second and Fifth, but Sentinels are running away just momentarily. Now he has dropped into sixth space with a seven and nine record. Pandora, Nitrogen, Lunar Hydra, and Overkill all at the bottom there. Nitrogen has pipped up just one spot to the eighth spot with a five and eleven record, tying Pandora, who in seventh. Uh, Luna obviously staying static at ninth with three and thirteen, but it has tied with Overkill. Uh, intense spot with another 3 and 13 record, but overkill's goal difference looking slightly worse for wear with a negative 35. Uh, not looking the strongest indeed, but still a hell of a lot of game time going, uh, and a lot of these teams really vying it out. But a little bit more of a separation here, Barman. Yeah, perhaps that little bit, you know, showing that there's, there's teams of more quality in this one just separating themselves, and as a result, dealing more game losses to those at the bottom but one, one team that I, I think arch arch was pointing out in the the talk beforehand and you know indiv on an individual level as well you see yoruba going five and three but flow in the two series had 550 points per game so he's really a man trying to push this team up and drops neri down neri went one and seven which was you know the exact opposite of their um 
their challenger team, Arcus, who went 1-7 last week and now have gone 6-2. Now have, have gone the wrong way round and are now on a seemingly a downward spiral. But yeah, you're a unit unity, Fearless Charlie all pushing up. Fearless Charlie, one of those teams that did really well in preseason and still haven't quite proved themselves. They do well here to get three above Neri, but there's still a lot of tough teams facing their way in order to really live up to that preseason hyping that they had found uh, earlier on. Yeah, indeed. The preseason hype maybe getting to the teams just a little bit, potentially. And Boopy, Sentinels, they look so strong. They've only dropped two games so far. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy kind of even imagining only dropping two games in a league like this. I mean, I've, they, yeah, they've just had a, a really, really good week. And it, it was kind of unexpected for me, Frizz uh, coming up from a uh, challenger last season and uh, coming into this minor team, and, and they really have been performing very well. Uh, but Toxin, very, very close to them on the tails. And um, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's going to be very interesting to see Toxin and Sentinels battle uh, against each other and, and see kind of who's the better team out of the two. It will be interesting. Obviously, Aruba, Unity, and Phyllis Charlie also hot on the tails there. But those are your standings for Ignis uh, in this week, uh, week number two. Obviously, we are on week number three now, so things could change up with that. Let's have a look at the fixtures uh, coming up in this week. And I am definitely turning my attention over to the Sentinels roster in Ignis. Uh, are they going to have any challenges? They're facing Overkill firstly. So Overkill here, they've got a bit of a mountain to climb. Santa near the bottom of the table for Ignis. Uh, uh, well, the Sentinels' second game is against Fearless Charlie. As we said, uh, Phyllis Charlie being that team that's really kind of predicted further up the table could be one matchup to watch. Uh, on the other side of things, Glacies, a lot of games here that you want to look out for. I think Sorceress is that team that I think could well make a run here. They are going to be facing a Rebos in their second game and Montbelliard in their first of the week. And Montbelliard versus, uh, oh, I mean, Karina Tribe uh, should be the first game of their week. And Montbelliard though facing Concerto, which is happening tonight. Uh, Unity only Rubo and Ignis is happening tonight as well. We'll get results if we find out them. Uh, but a lot of good games here. And uh, Barman, I think, you know, the teams to watch right now are Sentinels, are Phyllis Charlie, are Sorcerers. You know, anything else, any other team here that really sticks out in my mind? I'm jumping towards the top of the table, clashing in, in Glacies here from Blizzard and Sanctum. Mm, of course. Um, yeah, both teams are undefeated so far, so maybe that is the moment where one of them falters and Blizzard have kept up their, their four win strength. Sanctum, Sanctum did drop to two draws, but yeah, it should be, should be an interesting one there. I think it's the only clash between the top four teams in Glacies who have maybe separated themselves a little bit, but Erebus, of course, only, only one game behind and they will play Sorcerers to try and claim their top four spot. I think Journeymen as well, another team that I've directed a lot of attention towards because they, they were a bit disappointing in the 4-0 sweep, but they seemed like they had potential to build. They'll be playing Montbelliard and, and trying to build up to another team, trying to trying to match up to those top four that have that have really been setting the standard for Glacies. Really, indeed. And Ignis, Boopy, Yoruba versus Toxin, it's just crossed my mind. That is going to be one hell of a matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Second versus third, uh, facing off against each other. Um, and Toxin definitely going to want to be taking that series in order to kind of catch up to Sentinels because Sentinels definitely on a streak right now. And um, another team I'm definitely going to be watching in Ignis is going to be Pandora. Um, they they have made a lot of roster changes. I, I know they've cut change and, and Lucas now left the team. So it's going to be a completely new team coming in for Pandora. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how they perform and, and whether they'll be better or worse or or, you know, how they'll compete with the other teams in, in Ignis. Well, playing the two bottom teams as well, something to point out there. Maybe a chance for them to really run up the table. Mm, that is true. I mean, this is, this, is, this is why I have Barman and Boopy on the, on the desk here. The stats eyes for them, uh, second to none here, the RSC. But those are your upcoming fixtures for the rival tiers. We're going to turn our attention over to the results for the next tier. It could be interesting to see how all these tits pan out, you know, over my years of casting here at the RSC. It's always been impeccably close, uh, but a few of these tiers now separating themselves. And oh my giddy aunt, look at the amount of four rows happening in Ignis. Uh, really, really surprising to see this come out from, you know, from, from one of the, you know, it, it predicted closer tiers, uh, uh, formerly known as Major, now known as Elite. Uh, 
I'm not going to run through them, but the only difference standing out was uh, uh, Rebos, uh, uh, no, Eros and Luna going 2-2 and Luna ID going 3-1 over Overtake as well. And Glaces, we are seeing a bit of a mix, more mixture of results. Still plenty more 4 O's. Uh, Thanatos and Avalanche 2 2 ing each other and Thanatos also getting a second 2-2 two -two with Oracle. So, I mean, Barman, talk me through these Ignis results. How many 4 O's are there? A, a ridiculous in mind. I I don't have the stats on this one, but could well be the most sweeps you've ever seen in one conference in RSC. One team that's really facing the brunt of it right now is Zulu. I was casting the the enclave one where they got swept in a, an incredibly close series. Yes, but still they get swept and and lose all three OT, OTs that came through in that one. But also last night they got swept by Eros, which means. They are the only team so far to go 0 and 16 within the opening two weeks. Not a single game win on the board. Oh. It's it's really getting. We were talking about how tough it was for other teams, but <laughs> no tougher for anyone else but Zulu in RSC so far. Zulu's here in 16. That is rather painful indeed. Uh, but on the flip side, we're we seeing Argon going 8 and 0 this week. Venom. Going eight and zero, uh, plenty more eight and O's. I can't really run my mind over it, but I think actually those are the only two teams who yeah, did yeah. go eight and O um, yeah. uh, for the Ignis franchise. And uh, uh, it sounds like Boopy, you've got a bit more, a few more stats here to look over for Ignis. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So Venom, yep, going eight O, taking down Fearless Bravo as well, which was uh, which was the team in second place last week, um, and they have now moved down, I believe. To fourth, so so Phyllis Bravo dropping two spots and Venom moving up into second, so a big game win there, um, and foroing their other series, and also Argon, um, going 8 0 as well. And Argon have only lost one game in two weeks, uh, one individual game. So, I mean, the matchup we really, really want to see here is going to be Venom versus Argon. In my opinion, it's going to be a crazy match. So I've got a fifteen and one right now, um, compared to Sulu's zero yeah. and sixteen. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit difficult indeed. If you are one of those teams struggling to get your footing, and once again, this may be a chance to uh, maybe time to make a bit of a change if you are one of the Zulu players. However, I am one to an ad massive advocate for staying with your team, sticking through it all, and finding your footing. On the Glacier side of things, uh, Barman, a bit closer there. Yeah, seeing a few more 2 alls and 3-1s come out. One that I went to was Andrew versus Bladesmiths, a team that we know the quality of, faltering here against an Andrew side that are trying to trying to push their way up. And, you know, they are at the bottom of the table, but I think with the, in this Glacier side might be closer than anyone else. Dodge in that series did get 492 points per game, so standout individual performance from him for former arch teammate behind the scenes here but yeah very impressive especially when bladesmiths did sweep in their other matchup showing how there's still no slouches they're still here to play but andrew a team at the bottom taking a win up, up the, from the team at the top <laughs> it's it's incredible here i don't think that's happened in any other conference but in elite it's, it's where it's going to happen <laughs> that, that was, is. i do know that 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 was a sub series but still uh, it is a very impressive result for andrew it I mean, Ansu is really, a really good player as well. The sub, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, exactly. What a what a fantastic performance it was, and I think Rhapsody also going seven and one this week really separates it. But with that, let's turn our attention over to the standings. Is it is going to be rather scary, particularly when we turn our attention to Ignis. We are going to focus on Glacies to start off with, uh, uh, as of how close uh, these uh, no how I mean how separated these standings are going to be in Ignis, but how close they are here in Glacies. A bit of a topsy turvy. It's going to be interesting when playoffs come around and cross conference matches come around to see how close these two tiers are. Uh, as Basemis obviously still at the top with a 12 and 4 record right now, or well, the Rapsi is chasing the tails with 11 and 5. Uh, uh, we see Zala moving down to a 9 and 7 record as Avalanche and Thanatos moving up. 8 and 8 for Avalanche, 7 and 9 for Thanatos, but Saturnia, Temple, and Oracles all 7 and 9 alone with uh, Thanatos, so 5th through to 8th, very closely tied, and ninth and 10th are 6 and 10, so only one game separating 10th and 5th, and only two games separating 10th separating and 4th, and you can actually break it down even further if you want to go only six games separating the whole of this uh, conference. Uh, incredibly close this is, Boopy. 
Yeah, crazy close. One game between first and second, one game between third and fourth. And then, I mean, fifth down to 10th, practically on the same number of wins. So, I mean, any kind of matchup and any any results next week really will kind of shake this table around a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can tell from the goal differences on the side. I, I think a lot of the teams are in kind of spots where they will be moving around. Some will be dropping, some will be going up. But I mean, yeah, this table is going to change immensely. Yeah, really good, especially with Angie taking game off the number one seed, Blades Misser. Really, anything can happen. And Barman, uh, you really can't put your finger on it, apart from the fact that literally this uh, this table could be flipped on its head within a week. Yeah, absolutely, especially considering Andrew beat top team Bladesmiths, but then also they get swept by by Temple, and that's what lets Temple overtake them as well as Oracles, even if it is by the sole game, you know, if they'd gotten a single one there, Andrew would still be ahead of them, so every series matters, you can't rely on those wins against, I mean, I say rely, you can't expect those wins against the top, definitely, but you can't rely on them even when you do get them that you are still going to get results against the teams that are similar to you, and you know, pretty much everything is proving it here. It's the tourney last week, they got two wins. This time, they get two losses, they drop to sixth. Temple, they draw and lose. This time, they lose and win, and that win pushes them uh, up into seventh. And, you know, just every team is going all over the place. I think it happened last season, where the second week, every single team changed. We don't quite get that here as Bladesmiths stay top, but it could very well happen next week that every single team will face a shift. Indeed, indeed, that could well be the case. And I think before we move on to Glacey, uh, Ignis, I have to ask you, Bo uh, Boopy, you know, when it comes to cross-conference, uh, how close are these matches going to be? I mean, I, it's so difficult to tell. I mean, the teams in Ignis, you know, the, the top teams doing really, really well. Um, and it, it's so difficult to tell, you know, the difference between the top teams in Glacies and the top teams in Ignis, especially with no uh, cross-conference games in league play. But when it comes to those kind of play-ins, those playoffs games, it's it's really going to show kind of which conference is a stronger conference because you can only kind of guess up until that point, really. Really true, but uh, nothing something we can, we don't need to guess at, is how ridiculous Ignis is going to look because I'm very excited to look at the... Uh, the the standings after this, as we're seeing Argon right oh, now, fifteen and one. But on the flip side, Zulu zero and sixteen <laughs> with a negative thirty two goal there for Argon. Almost clear, very close to being clear at the tippity top. Uh, Venom is on their heels though with a thirteen and three record in second place. They do move up to that uh, as Luna Io move, drops down to third. I mean, stays at third with eleven and five. But time with Phyllis Echo. Who was also 11 and 5. Turner 6 goes to Eros as they move up into 5th. Uh, Oasis is staying at 6th with an 8 and 8th record. 7th and 8th are swapping around as Enclave moves up. Vanguards move down. 6 and 10 to Enclave. 4 and 12 to Vanguard. Overtake with a 2 and 14 record. Stays at 9th and Zulu with a 0 and 16 record at 10th. And, uh, you know, Barman, do you want to touch on the 0 and 16? I, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 presumably the toughest hand that, that any team has been dealt in the opening two weeks. You can't ask for much worse than 0-16, but you have to look at the positives here. They still score 29 goals, not that far behind teams ahead of them. And in that sweep against Enclave, they still had so many positives. They were making the chances, they were getting close to it, but there was still just no game win for them. And you can see that there's still positivity from them. We had Papusa and we have Papusa and Jambi in the chat, you know, talking about their belief in their team and that they are going to stick together. You know, you like to see you were saying that that positivity come through and belief in the team, but it, it's it's going to turn around quick because zero and sixteen leaves you so far behind. And you, you know, when you're aiming for top six here to at least have a chance in play-ins, you're you're already eight behind, and and that's a huge margin to try and make up. I also just want to point out, Arches pointed out that we do have the first result coming in here from Elite and Luna Io and Foolish Bravo drew but in game three Bravo beat Io 11-0 so um, oh not sure God. what's happened with that one. <laughs> uh, that's uh, fairly fairly, uh, fairly ridiculous is, is yeah well I mean you know underperformance, inconsistency and some pop-offs are really being displayed here as Ignis and, uh, and Boopy not as many changes happening, but Argon, do you really think, is it, are they going to be the team that completely runs away with this tier? You know, I, I think so. I think Argon are the team to beat here. 
Um, I know Ark, has, as Tommy, is very confident about his his Venom team and saying, you know, he's got some of the best uh, best elites on the roster. But I think Argon's just too good at the moment. They're, they're playing really well. And, um, I mean, some of the clips I've seen them share around the Discord, they're scoring these insane goals. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think they're definitely the team to beat and, and Venom's going to have to prove themselves against them. 100%, 100%. Uh, I mean, Argon right now looking like a Smurf team, but... Uh... Evidently performing way, way above, you know, any team in this conference and uh, uh, understandably and respectfully earning that top spot. Uh, and with the fixtures ahead of us, uh, uh, I mean, definitely looking at the game on the 6th, which is going to be Argon versus Venom. That is the game which everybody needs to pay attention to. It is decided for the top two spots here after we in week number three, going after week number three. Who is going to take it? On the flip side, Zulu, they have not got the best of draws. Uh, facing us against Vanguard in their first matchup, but then Venom in the second one. If Zulu can take these games off Venom and Vanguard, this could well propel them back into a position which is a little bit more comfortable. You know, going an 8 0 week can definitely separate, you know, definitely. Definitely put you back into the standings on the flip side. Galaxies, uh, all of these games, to, to be frank, could really cause one hell of a, of a shift up. It's incredibly close, Barman. Yeah, I'm, I'm maybe drawn towards Rhapsody versus Avalanche. It's going down on Sunday. Half of the teams from this Glacies tier that went undefeated last week as Avalanche didn't quite match Rhapsody 7-1, but still got a win and a draw. You know, Boopy's team trying to trying to keep up. And I think that's an important one in, in the development of this tier. And to see if Rhapsody can try and keep up with Bladesmiths or if Avalanche will make it a bit more interesting. Maybe maybe elsewhere to, to note Sanatos versus Zalor. Uh, one below each of Rhapsody and Avalanche for another top-of-the-table clash going down on Thursday. I think if I get the days right, yes. And... Um, yeah, again, another opportunity for these teams at the top to prove themselves, to try and keep up with Bladesmiths and really make sure that they're they're putting up a good fight for those top two spots. You know, in the grand scheme of the, the playoffs, the top two spots are, are the most important and you always have to be trying your absolute best to get there because the extra life in playoffs is just so beneficial to your chances at the trophy. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And in the Ignis, French, uh, Ignis Conference, Boopy, there's some pivotal games i think for some some teams who really need it yeah absolutely i mean obviously the game i've been hyping up um i definitely hope that one's going to be on stream but yeah there there are a few other ones i mean eros versus oasis will be a good match as well two teams very close together um and you know either way that goes people will definitely be moving up the standings on that one and um Overtake versus Fearless Bravo. That that's a chance for Fearless Bravo to kind of get in ahead and, and kind of compete with these these top teams um, like Venom and Argon. Um, so that would be a good one as well. Indeed, indeed. So guys, get your dates in those diaries for all those pivotal games, particularly that Argon versus Venom matchup. Uh, really one that you do not want to miss. But we are going to turn our attention over to the master tier and have a look at how these results have fallen. Uh, and over the past week, uh, far, thank God, far fewer four O's happening here. Only two on Ignis and two in Glaces. Uh, these going over to Nocturne, four O sub zero, and then also get a four O over Warlock. So an eight and O week for the Nocturne side. On the flip side, Dogon got a four O over Storm, but fell three one to Carnage. Uh, uh, earlier on in that week and Carnage actually getting a 4-0 over Overwatch so Carnage now with a 7-1 and one week in the, respectively so some really good performances going across the board here but much closer bar man across these two uh, conferences yeah again there's there's it's back to maybe the more normality mm. for RSC in, in these results and uh, I, I went to Glacies first with Chianina versus Haven it was a bit of a bottom of the table clash where, where Chi and Nina were able to come out on top, but some of the stats were surprising me. Tinny was the player with the, the highest points per game out of the two teams, and, and he's on Haven, the losing team. And also, Haven had seven demos per game compared to about one from Chi and Nina, and still they lose at 1 3. So clearly, demos do not always work at this high level and really didn't come off for Haven. On, on top of that, Haven have just lost 0 4 today, so they stay 2 and 18. And it, it's a really rough run for them. Not quite as bad as Zulu just yet, I think, but another team that, that's facing a lot of opposition in their opening few series. 
Indeed, that is very, very true. Uh, and Boopy, Ignis, uh, uh, I'd say even closer than the Glacies side. Yeah, definitely. Um, with Ignis, I do have to mention um, Carnage having a, a really good week this week, sweeping Overwatch and getting the 3-1 against Dogon. And Dogon is second place, so um, really, really solid results coming out from Carnage. Um, and also, a result I was going to mention was Pyrrhix versus Dion. I don't know if I said that correctly, but Pyrrhix being the eighth team, drawing against Dion, who's fifth. Uh, definitely a good result for them. I know uh, Pyrrhix hasn't had the, the best start to um, league play so far, so that could be a sign of bouncing back and kind of grinding their way up the standings. Some great fixtures and some great results uh, for the week two within Master. And with that, let's have a look at the standings for Glacies uh, after week number two. Uh, and uh, as you said, Barman said, back to a little bit of normality after the crazy Ignis Elite tier that they've just seen. Obviously, Nocturne does move up to that first spot with a 13-3 and record, uh, but trailing very closely is Zhu with a 12-4 and record of their own. Uh, Hades has dropped, unfortunately, for Senji, as it's 11-5 for them in third place. But moving up behind them is Rias Legion, who are into fourth with a 10-6 record. But tying them is Iovi in fifth with a 10-6 record, respectively. Phoenix has dropped down into the sixth space with a 9-7 record. Chianina in it to, had moved up to seventh with a 6-10 record. Uh, Sub-Zero dropping down into eighth. Uh, with 5 and 11 to their name. And 9 and 10th going to Haven and Warlocks, who are both tied there at 2 and 14 in this week's performance. Uh, so, uh, quite a few changes. You, the only team in second place to not move anywhere. Nocturne will be happy with their performance, so they've moved up to 13 and 3. But uh, tying at the bottom, Haven and Warlocks definitely looking to step things up, Boopy. Yeah, absolutely. Only having two wins so far in uh, in league play, you definitely want to be um, kind of, you know, making the most out of all your matches from now on in order to move your way up. And even teams like Sub Zero, Chianina, um, you you really need to be, um, you know, getting these games in and and making sure you're kind of getting these wins because it, it it's such a spread table compared to the other tiers. This one really, really is. I mean. There are some close games, but very few, uh, much less ties happening. The only ones at the bottom and then in that fourth, fifth spot. Uh, uh, and Barman, with the games being a bit more spread, uh, do you think the tier is going to change too much? Well, with the first couple of results coming through, there's definitely still potential for change here. You know, I mentioned Haven getting swept. The team that swept them was Iovi up at the top half of the table. So they've overtook, overtaken Nocturne here, but not you. As they've got another 3-1, they've gone one better than Blizzard here and gone for a fifth consecutive 3-1 victory to <laughs> mean that Nocturne is temporarily down in third, but you know, obviously with those extra games in hand. So if, if they don't pull off the same wins, which you know I'm not saying they won't, but there's definitely opportunity there for them to, to fall to a little bit and to allow Zhu to go back or to try and challenge for first again and Iovi maybe to be the ones to crack that. So much interweaving around here and you know we'll see in, in the fixtures as well how this could change even further, but it's far from locked in. And, you know, these top six, only four wins separating them. Yeah, very, very close indeed. And uh, looking on to the Ignis uh, and seeing how those standings have progressed. Uh, I think, you know, these tiers uh, is so, so close. And once again, though, uh, far more ties here and a closer match matchup between the bottom and the top half. Uh, Maybe potentially excluding Storm here, who have stayed at the bottom with a 2-14 and 14 record. Uh, Carnage at the top with a 13-3 record have not moved, but Luna Titan have moved up. Uh, it's overtaking Fearless Alpha. They are tied at a 10-6 and 6 record, but three wins behind Carnage, who are at that first place spot. Uh, fourth have moved up to that position with a 9-7 record, but are tied with both Dion and Gladiators, who have both moved down to 5th and 6th, all with 9-7. Einsteinium are at the seventh place and have not moved with a seven and nine record. Purix moving up though to eighth with a six and ten record to their name. Overwatch dropping down to a five and eleven record and tenth is Storm as I've just had for mention, not moving with two and fourteen. Minus twenty gold if for the tenth place and a plus twenty gold if for Carnage out first. So forty goals separating them two uh, and Boopy. Uh, once again, it's close, but not as close as you kind of first look at it. 
Yeah, definitely not too close. I mean, there is the three-way tie, fourth to sixth, and um, and the two kind of next to each other, Luna Titan and Fearless Alpha. But I, I really do expect Carnage to kind of start running away with this this um, this conference. I mean, they they did get the win against um, you know the second place team. Um, so I I think that they'll definitely get the results in and start you know gaining a, quite a big lead. Um, another thing to mention is Storm as well. Uh, making a huge roster change, cutting a lot of their players and getting practically a, a complete new roster in. So it's going to be interesting to see how that roster performs and, and kind of how they're going to, you know, compete against the other teams. Indeed, it's going to be 100% an interesting week of fixtures. Uh, as we are going to turn our attention to them fixtures and see how week number three is going to pan out for all of these teams. Uh, exciting nonetheless, the elite tier, so the master tier even so so exciting and definitely excited to see exactly how things do pan out uh, the games that are happening today iovi versus haven and warlocks for, and you uh, are happening tonight as we speak on the flip side uh, only overwatch and dogon for ignis happening tonight but a plenty of interesting games happening across this week barman yeah that the only other result we haven't talked about overwatch dogon there was a two all and Another team that's made a roster change is Marvelous has come in for Paul on Overwatch, but still not much more luck if I go and look at it. I, 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 it's their second consecutive draw, still yet to find their first win Overwatch, so they're be hoping that Marvelous can do better. Certainly did well for, I think, Carnage last season. Uh, maybe as a sub, but you know he's definitely had some, some experience in the, in the RSC. Elsewhere, in terms of games that are actually yet to happen, maybe looking at uh, Nocturne here, their results, you know, we've already seen Zhu and Iovi get a win on the board, so Nocturne going up against Phoenix, and if I can quickly find the other one, against Rias Legion as well, so, you know, two, two top of the table clashes there against teams that are trying to chase them, those are going to be high pressure situations if they do want to try and regain their top spot. It's going to be very, very difficult indeed, and Boopy, uh, what about you, what games really stand out for you? Well, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, I can't lie, but I'm I'm definitely going to be, you know, hoping to uh, kind of watch Sub Zero versus uh, Zhu. Is that how you say it? Uh, <laughs> I'm so bad with these names, but I, I'm definitely going to be wanting to watch that one. I, I know Sub Zero is a good roster, and and they've they've um, played uh, twelve out of their fourteen sub games due to uh, very unfortunate circumstances. So I think that's definitely kind of the match that's most important this week for me, just to kind of move up in the standings in that sense. Apart from that, I, I'm quite interested in Nocturne's games. They've had a, a really good performance last week and um, stuff like Nocturne versus Phoenix. I know Phoenix um, had a really good week one, kind of fell off this week, but are wanting to bounce back. So kind of games like that, that are going to interest me. Definitely going to be interesting indeed. Uh, and those are your upcoming fixtures for the Master Tier, but we have got some upcoming fixtures for the Premier Tier as well as it does kick off uh, this week, week number three. Some really, really exciting games that you've got to look out for and you've got to tune in for. It's in Glacies. It is Austrian Force versus Luna Esports happening up there. 0 0 prospects from the 0 0 Nation team facing up against Calgiari Calcio, one of the titans of the weekly tournament. So, uh, 2T Wilhaben going against Centurion and Finale facing up against the Fluck, the most recent winners of the Tuesday tournament. So on the Ignis side of things, Dark Magic facing up against Nami Brigade. One of the only two tier two, one of the only matchups happening here, which is franchise based. Uh, Ascent Esports will be facing against Z Dust Sucker on the third. Uh, Trinitas Esports facing against Null on the twenty eighth, uh, and London Esports uh, facing against Solace. Uh, that is a date to be announced. Uh, but guys, look at these games. I mean, Barman, Boopy. I'm so excited to see these guys play. Yeah, we, we already have our, our first results coming through as well. One from each side. You can see they're each played on a Monday. And perhaps it is already our first shock of the season as Trinitas swept null all one goal games, but no overtime. <laughs> they did it all in regulation. But we are off and running, folks. Trinitas sweeping null. And on the other side, we did have a draw between Overture and Mustu Fluck. I mean, some players Ooh. making their debuts there. I mean, I think it's only Ducks and Smokes. The other four did play before, but... Ducks on Overture, they were part of a 6-0 win in game number two, and 
Still, it was a two-all draw. There's some really interesting matchups already, and this is going to be one heck of a season. It really is. I mean, 2-2 two, two finale versus Masterflat. Masterflat, obviously a team that is well-renowned within the bubble scene and competing in many, many ROCS qualifiers. Uh, but Null getting 4 owed by Trinitas. I mean, when we saw the... Uh, the rosters uh, for uh, this premier tier now looked incredibly strong with a lot of 2.1.2.2k players on that side. Trinitas Esports, though, obviously maybe having a little bit more chemistry, a little bit more you know, dividends playing uh, in as a team. And it's going to be one hell of an exciting week ahead of us. I mean, this season could not get any better. What a performance it was indeed. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's been absolutely incredible. And I'm very, very excited to have these games on stream, which I'm sure we will. And guys, you just have to tune in and make sure you get voting for the Premier Tier when you have the option because, oh my God, giddy aunt and i'm looking forward to those games uh, but guys as we're going to go over to the franchise standings uh, and uh that's something i have to note uh, the symbiotes went 31 and 9 this week uh, what a showing from them and that's just going to put them at the first place spot a massive performance coming out from symbiotes this week and their respective team to, uh, down into second and third is fearless esports and fort templar how they're moving up fourth fifth and sixth arctic frenzy overture and sanctuary who have bumped up one place uh, Ford dropping down into seventh unfortunately zimtra has not moved it in at that eighth spot uh, ninth and tenth going over to dark magic and shaman esports dropping down into 11 12 13th is ox gaming glamour esports and system solaris uh, a non-mover again at 14th uh, is Element Esports. Uh, Might of Hades are dropped into 16th along with 9 Esports in 16th. I mean, yeah, nine, and Might of Hades in 15th. Uh, 9 Esports in 16th, I uh, beg my pardon. Uh, as Luna Esports also drops into 17th. Uh, uh, 18th and 19th, both these spots have been moved up as Override and Vault Tech are going to take those. But Waifu Fan Club struggling at the bottom with the 20th spot. Uh, and, you know, I think it's impressive results across the board. Uh, a big difference, though, between the first and last position. Uh, but I have to give credit to, and I'm not calling out Zulu here, who have had a, a bit of a struggle, but the rest of the teams on Shaman Esports doing a really good job to keep them at that 10th place. A really good performance across the board. Uh, but guys, those have that has been your recap uh, of the week two and how everything has panned out to over the first two weeks and guys do tune in as much as you possibly can to the RSC a lot of games happening here and a lot of awesome matches particularly with the Premier getting online but guys we are going to move on to our special guest here tonight uh, an interesting a, a beautiful brilliant special guest that I'm very very excited to talk to uh, and a person who I have not been told who it is actually um Ooh. Uh, I, I don't know who the special guest is, uh, and it's going to be interesting to have a nice chat with them, but we are going to be able to see within the graphic, and it is going to be Steb, one of the master players coming out uh, from uh, Phoenix on the Forge franchise, uh, and we'll be getting him shortly, and he has joined, he is deafened, but he can hear us now. Steb, welcome to the RS cast, it's a pleasure to have you here, you're a fantastic player, it's really brilliant to talk to you, I mean, how have you found the first two weeks of the RSC? Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, first two weeks, first first week was good. We played um very well. We were good, good as a team, and uh, we had good opponents too. So it was like it was it was a good week, yeah. And then, but we kind of fell off, like Booby said, in week two when they um we we played we played um IOV and they they didn't even have um unit or Kevin, but they still played very good, and we kind of like I'm not gonna use this as an excuse yeah well i'm kind of am but I, I did <laughs> i did have COVID, so i was COVID nerfed you know yeah, I COVID played, nerf. I, it's yeah, a big thing yeah <laughs> i played worse than normal but yeah other than that it was it was fine it was fine we yeah regained. exactly you regame it's it's always a pleasure casting your games uh, a very very a huge amount of excitement whenever you are on the field uh, uh, but this week a lot of really close tiers uh, are going across the whole of the rsc um obviously you big and master any particular teams that you're really vying for control over um like in our in my conference yeah in your conference yeah yeah um like we want to get we want to get top four that's the 
So, but I think I think um, Nocturne, and then I think Sub Zero bounce back, and then I O or X X U get top three, and then we're gonna aim for that fourth spot. Very interesting indeed. And uh, my final question before I hand over to my beautiful colleagues is uh, uh, with the Premier Tier starting this week, uh, are you excited to maybe tune into those games or, or is that your aspiration to be competing in that Premier Tier next season? Oh, yeah, I'll be watching that 100%. Yeah, 100%. I don't know if ne- next season is probably the season after that. That's what yeah. I'm going to be <laughs> Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting indeed. And, you know, any particular team in that Premier Tier who you're really expecting to kind of take it all? Um, London Esports, I think. London Esports. So calling it out early, the prediction from the master player, Steb, London Esports, to take it all in the Prem tier. Farman, I'm going to hand it over to you first. Uh, any questions for our beautiful special guest? Yeah, I'm I'm going to go to the, the old RSC class again and ask about your origins, you know, how, how you got into RSC. And then I know you did spend pretty much a whole season as a as a PFA, you know, pretty almost a spectator where you're not really part of the part of an actual team but how did you then find going into your next full season and actually getting to compete in in this rsc league yeah i played um i was a permafe like you said for a whole season and just watched the league and i was very active in like six months the casual six months so and like i like the community a lot i like everyone there everyone's like very nice and stuff and then the next season i came into um i i was i was but in the beginning, I was major, well, elite then, and um, the, but then I got moved up to elite. So like I had plans for major, but I moved up my first season. So I was a elite sub, well master sub if you call it by the name today, and that was with a uh, waifu fan club, and then and then I was transferred to Ignis and played with Hailey and Bope. We got fourth, and the season after that I played with um. Waifu Fan Club got third, and now we're here. They're looking to claim that first spot indeed. Uh, uh, and uh, Barman, I, I'm taking it away from you. Have you got anything else to ask the, the, the man himself? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go from the from the past to the immediate future, you know, looking into the, the next week that, that's coming up. We've talked about some of the fixtures, but if I if I go look quickly, you're facing Hades, who have also similarly to you maybe had a not the best week number two, and your other match against Nocturne, who are the, the, the table leaders after week number two. So how are you feeling about your chances in those two specific matchups? You know, do you think you can try and bounce back here from your slightly less convincing week two? I mean, these are like top three teams at the moment. So this is going to be a very, very hard week. But I think we can I think we can pull off a few games at least. Maybe win a series. That's the plan. Mm-hmm. That, that'll be good indeed. And, uh, and Boopy, you know, step. He's a well-renowned in the, uh, player within the RSC. We saw the hype uh, in chat when it was announced that he is the special guest, a very beloved. And Poopy, any questions from you, my friend? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone knows Stev. Everyone loves Stev. And um, <laughs> Stev, you put a big smile on my face with that, uh, that Sub-Zero bouncing back prediction. Yeah, um, of course, man. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask... Um, when when did you actually join RSC? Because I do believe we either joined the same. I think we joined the same season. I am. Um, it was season six. I think I was the perm. Yeah, team. same. But like same, I, joined, I remember. Sorry. I joined the server like um, a year ago or something, and I just I was just in the server but didn't start playing until season six. Hmm. Yeah, I remember having the rivalry, the sub rivalry, uh, back <laughs> in our first season. That was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Boopy, you're not the same tier, bro. Let me just let me just make make sure oh, you realize that. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It's well, all right. <laughs> well, I could I could just promote myself if I wanted to. So, yeah. <laughs> a massive <laughs> death. A massive, just for the matchup massive. against Steb. <laughs> uh, just for the matchup against Steb. So just giving Steb a free win is good stuff. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but oh, uh, uh, Steb, it's great to have you here. I mean, Boopy, did you have another question? Uh, no, I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, the brutality was too much. <laughs> uh, the brutality was too much. But um, uh, Steb, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you, and you're you're very very well loved here at the ISC. Anything to say to the chat and people watching, and uh, anything to leave your mark um, on? Um, uh, Axlos, I'm gonna give you a kiss. Yeah. Hey. That's, that's it. And I love you all. As well. Yeah. Of <laughs> 
Axe nice. Lost. That's You're going to get a kiss. To, it will be DPD'd over to you ASAP. Uh, but <laughs> thank you very much, Steph, for joining us here. It's a pleasure to get a chat with you. Uh, and uh, you can probably see the chat. Massive love to you guys in the chat. Can we get some love and some hearts for Steb uh, before he heads off? Uh, a brilliant player uh, and exactly, you know, the man you. of the hour. Uh, thank you very much. But we are going to move over to thank our you. clips of the week. My most favorite times of the week. I get to lose my mind whilst you guys don't have to have your ears bleeding as I shout into my mic because I'm muted. Uh, but guys, uh, these are your clips of the week. The voting poll will be put up. So get your votes in. Is the deciding factor may come down to just one vote. Last week we saw Frizzle take it with a beautiful... Goal at the zero seconds. Uh, who is going to take it this week? Uh, roll the clips. Oh my, oh, oh my, I mean, what were those five? What the hell was that? How can you pick? We've seen like three double taps, a triple tap, a ceiling shot and a team pinch. What do you mean? I, uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I can't even speak. All of the, all of the clips submitted this week were insane and, and these five picked as well are all insane and i mean what what clip would you guys choose as the uh, as as the favorite cuz i i just can't pick between them personally i, I don't really under, i don't i can't pick <laughs> i can't I, comprehend I, I, the possibility I of picking I one can't, I, I can't pick i do feel for <laughs> enclave cuz they were clipped on twice here <laughs> uh, for goals four and five uh but you know i love myself a, a triple tap i think that was ridiculous however i am gonna go for that team pinch Thanks. i think uh, i think the yeah the triple tap so much mechanical skill uh he found the space he was able to execute it effectively and i really get got that flip reset as well really needed and it was a brilliant goal however i think the mechanical skill is a match but also the team play to come out of uh, of the um of the team pinch was ridiculous i think that is definitely a, a you know goal number four definitely one where i'm going to vote for um as we are going to you know go into the voting it is very very close here and it is only one vote in it. Uh, Psycho, who is at the top uh, with those 12 votes uh, here for that team pinch. Uh, Jay Hill's in second, though, with that triple tap with 11 votes. So really, really close here. So, guys, if you haven't voted already, it's now tied between Jay Hill's and Psycho. The time is running out. Uh, Jay Hill's at the top of the last second. The comeback. And the last Second, Jay Hills is going to take it with his, you know, undeniably beautiful, illustrious, succulent, uh, and uh, dare I say it, Vector, scintillating <laughs> triple tap. <laughs> as we are going to run these clips again, congratulations, Jay Hills. Take it by one vote. Uh, these are your clips of the week. Goal number three, Jay Hills with triple tap for the win. Let's have a look at these clips one more time. I'm not afraid to 
Jay Hills, congratulations to you and a well-deserved clip indeed. What a triple tap. I, I don't think I've casted the triple tap for the RSC, actually. I think that's my first I've seen. Uh, what a clip it was. Uh, and also credit must go to uh, the other contestants. A uh, Beautiful clips across the board. That one was, uh, I think, particularly close. Uh, coming down to the last literal second. Whoever put that last vote in. That'd be coming in clutch for you, Javier, but uh, really, really close. We were just talking whilst those clips happened. Uh, uh, in what a close set of clips they were. RSC is just going to bigger and better heights, and the players are incredible. But I have been told that B Shake, you know, you had a bit of a bit of an upset last week. Okay, you know, you failed miserably, scoring a, a ridiculous own goal to, uh, you know, hand themselves defeat on a platter. But supposedly this one really does take the cake. Archeon, do you want to wanna run this? Into the second half here. Once more, they'll have to play from behind. Maybe the instant equalizer. Rebirth is up. Charlotte, no way! I think it was off the crossbar, but Rebirth plays it anyway. Three from Dino, no, not quite. Ohio Sarah, it will be three eventually. Oh, Disaster for Journeyman! Into the second half here. Once more, they'll have to play from behind. Maybe the instant equalizer. Rebirth is up. Charlotte, no way! I think it was off the crossbar, but Rebirth plays it anyway. Oh. <laughs> Three from Dino, no, not quite. Ohio Sarah, it will be three eventually. Disaster for Journeyman! It was actually an insane squishy <laughs> thing. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say. It was an absolutely insane squishy save coming out from Reflex, but on the wrong goal. And this game, <laughs> I cast, you heard it was me and Barman there oh, man. casting this game. Uh, uh, and this, just for context, uh, this was a game to take it to 2-2, two, two, I believe, wasn't it? I think it was. Uh, to 1-3, three, to 1-3. Three. They, 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 it was to, to get three. on the board. <laughs> they were to get on the board, you know. And this goal <laughs> would have given them that one win. Okay, yeah, Revex. He did everything right. I think he, uh, I think he set up the whole play. He did everything brilliantly. He landed in the goal to set up the shot for his teammate. He then squishy saves it out of the opposition's net to, you know, to remove that. And then the counter attack comes in, and he immediately gets scored on. <sighs> it, it's the loudest I've ever screamed on a cast. That's that's how ridiculous it was. Yeah, I don't really yeah, know I what was... to say. I was going to say, your enthusiasm makes that clip ten times better. I've never heard you scream that loud I mean, that, that, that's, that's both <laughs> clip of the week and fail of the week with Ed and Be a brilliant squishy saver. But on the wrong Top notch. Uh, top notch squishy <laughs> save. Commiserations, Reflex, but you are... Wait, and I, I do really think it's taking it out away from B-Shake because that was quite, quite um, catastrophic. Uh, uh, to say the least. But anyway, that is your fail of the week this week. Uh, and we are going to move on to uh, players of the week. Uh, weekly awards, uh, you know, the time where I need to take a deep breath. <laughs> you need to turn your volume down, maybe just a cheeky little bit. Uh, I'm going to absolutely lose my mind. Uh, as we are going over to the weekly awards, guys. Uh, who is up first? Uh, as we are going to go to players week four, prospect MVP going over to the Keen. He's keen for those points with 502.25 to his name. Finisher going over to Endrick, 0.83 goals per game. Striker to Jack F777 with 75% shooting accuracy, not missing a beat. He is into playmaker going over to dehydration, 1.13 assists per game. Definitely not as dehydrated as he. They seem and making another appearance is Mr. Keen, averaging out two saves per game, getting that savior medal. Those are your players of the week for the perfect here. Moving on swiftly over to Challenger. These are your challenges, players of the week for week number two. MVP going over to Toe. He is a big Toe. 500 per game. Finisher going over to Sir Cubix with 0.75 goals per game. Traber going over to Punky with a 66.67 shooting accuracy. Almost the devil himself with that 666. Uh, playmaker going over to Ecliptus uh, with a 1.5 assist per game, making the difference where it matter matters. And Savior going over to Nor with a 2.25 saves per game. What a beautiful set of players. And those are your two players of the week. Moving on to Rival. MVP going over to Jake with 
542.2 points per game. Jake also claims the finisher title with a 2.75 goals per game. Shiker going over to Astro with a 75% shooting accuracy. Playmaker going over to Hockey, 1.5 assists per game. And Savior falling in the hands of Lagar. Got some safe palms to make 2.67 saves per game. GG's to all these players. Players of the week for rival team in week number two. Moving on up to the next is Elite Players of the Week. MVP go over to Spartax. He is Sparta and he is going to have 555.75 points per game. Finisher going over to Anthony with 2.13 goals per game. Striker going over to Skays with a 71.43 shooting accuracy, finding them top ends. Playmaker going over to Kartoffler, 1.75 assists per game. And Savior going over to Pile or Dodge. He doesn't dodge into the ball. He dodges the ball away from his own net with 2.75 saves per game game as we move on to the master tier and these master players really have a fantastic performance this week as mvp goes over to matty mumu moving his way along with 588.5 points per game finisher is going to go over to azazel with 2.29 goals per game striker larson who else but him with a 62.5 percent shooting accuracy playmaker is going to be charm as he has a 1.63 assist per game definitely charming his team into that victory his savior is going to be major bolter he's a lightning bolter straight to that goalkeeper position with three saves per game those are your players of the week and subsequently let's have a look at the team week these are the outstanding performance across it is going to be as Hazel from the Nocturne side. Elite is going to be Spartax on Venom. Low from Yoruba is Challenger is going to be an overall player. And that is Boswell. And from Prospect, from the Cardinals roster, it is Nature. Those are your team of the week. And what a performance it was indeed from all of these players. A massive GG's goes around to all of you. What a showing it has been. And what a week of Rocket League at the RSC it has been. It's been a pleasure to be here the whole time. The top tier managers for the Fantasy League this week. Minty, 281 points for Master. Elite is going to be Axlos, Vector and Cubby. The three-way tie with 368 points. Rival is going to be Axel 23. Challenger going up to be Shaker. He may have failed of the week, but he has got the Fantasy League win with 284 points per game. Uh, points per game. Points here in Challenger tier. Prospect is going to go to Ginge and Deadfang with 264 points. Uh, and with that, let's have a look at the Fantasy League standings. Uh, how things have panned out uh, after week number two and at first it is Mr. Deep Sound uh, with 2,235 points. Uh, Axos is going to be in second with 2,159 points. Uh, Dylan in third with 2,142. Uh, Hare in fourth with 2,000 Six, uh, Andre just tra trailing closely to Ohio with 2,085. In sixth it is all with 2,019 points. Those are your fantasy league standings after week two. What a performance indeed. And if guys, if you want to be involved in the fantasy league, do join up to our Discord uh, so you can test your knowledge across all the players. See how well you know the RSC. See how well you know the tiers. You can build your teams uh, concurrently and see how well you can place. Uh, but what a performance it has been this week. It's been uh, full of some highlight games, some beautiful clips, uh, and uh, really, uh, really special. I mean, Barman, what a week it's been. Huge, huge moments all across the board. Really, really good continuation from week one. And so many storylines. Like, it's, it's, it's the exciting part about this is week to week, we see the storylines develop. Some teams faltering week one and then bouncing back some teams needing to bounce back next week after some lackluster results here and in the fantasy league too you see mr cheap sound at the top i i think he said he's silver golden rocket league or something but he knows the league so well being behind the scenes and and interacting with everyone at the top of the fantasy league standings it's really great to see everyone getting involved <laughs> It really, really is indeed. And Boopy, uh, some brilliant clips, some brilliant week. But we are on the cheap section for series of the week. Do you want to talk us through the brilliant series that we're going to have up on the YouTube channel? Absolutely, absolutely. We are going to be having Enclave versus Zulu um, up on the YouTube 
a bit of an interesting one. That this was a sweep um, for Enclave, but it was so close. I mean, most of them, if not all of them, I do believe, one goal games and um, a lot of overtimes in it. It's a really, really good series to watch. So that will be up on the YouTube shortly for everybody to enjoy. But yeah, I mean, no other series to choose, really. It was really, really framing for me in that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> it has really been a fantastic week uh, of Rocket League. Obviously, Zulu up on YouTube, maybe, you know, biting their tongues just a little bit after the struggling first two weeks. But uh, it was very, very close. Could have gone either which way. And guys, thank you very much for being here at the RSC cast this week it's been a brilliant roundup uh, with myself uh, barman and boopy a big shout out must go over to our sponsors lunar organization from steve blood if you want to find anything about study caravans or any more information on lunar organization do get in touch uh, with steve blood uh, go follow our socials at rsc underscore ye twitter instagram and tiktok and twitch here as youtube is rseu drop us some follows drop us some subscriptions over there it does help us out greatly and guys if you're ever interested in being involved just more than a player more than a spectator here at the rse go and get involved into the uh the admin roles and the staff roles here at the rsc you'll be able to get to learn a hell of a lot of new skills that you may way from production graphics uh, uh, admin role stats uh, everything in the background that may help you in you know your careers in your education whatever it may be if you want to get into esports if you want to work in esports this is a great place to start uh, whatever the field it may be guys so do get involved uh, it's a great way to get into the esports realm it's a great way to get working in this sector guys this is the place to start so if you're interested do go ahead and apply for the admin and staff roles uh, we'll be able to educate you all the way up you don't need any previous knowledge you don't need any prior experience uh, we're here to help and teach you if you want to go but if you have got prior experience prior knowledge uh, it's a definitely a way to bolster your repertoire of uh, esports knowledge uh, and rsc knowledge you guys do get involved in it. it is very very much worthwhile a big thank you to lunar organization once again if you're ever interested in that do get in touch with steve blood uh, you can find his contact deals on discord uh, and if you're interested even further you can't find those do message one of the admins they'll be able to put you in touch uh, a big thanks to HyperX as well, and a tech partner here at the RSC and us as well, who are providing those brig graphics for the RSC. It's a beautiful thing to look at. And obviously, guys, if you're interested in even more Rocket League and even more brilliant action, do get involved with the Versus Weekly every single Tuesday. Chance for you to really prove your metal top top players in europe calgary couch is there master Fluck is there mcon's there enterprise esports to really big names if you want to see how you can face up see if you can take down these top dogs do get involved for a little bit of cash in your pocket so guys uh so guys i really really hope that you do enjoy yourselves particularly in the verses as there is one big announcement coming your way yes sir you heard it from hops first you know whenever hop says announcement something is coming in your direction time it's two verses so guys you better tune in next week uh, versus announcement is going to be ginormous so guys uh, do get in touch and mr deep sound i do see that land post in the chat don't worry don't worry i've got something under my sleeve for that to later date next week going to be for versus do tune in for those big announcement guys because it really is absolutely huge boopy Barman, thank you so much for joining me here. It's a pleasure having you at the desk. You have beautiful face and beautiful minds. Bald Manor Town is incoming one day. Uh, you thought you could get away with it, but you weren't able to be Barman. The guys, uh, <laughs> thank close. you so, <laughs> so much for joining us here at the RS Cast. A big thank to Ark and the background. We hope you have a fantastic week of Rocket League and a week in fantastic week in general. And we'll see you back here very, very soon for some more Rocket League action. Good night. This is to or die Feel it in my veins tonight Emotional suicide You know it's a night for I I didn't wanna walk Didn't wanna walk the plank no. But the Mariona The Mariona It came Like the thunder